Hi everyone, uh, I have my husband Simon here asking me questions today, so first one Si. To the sea is atmospheric, dark and suspenseful. All those good things you want to find in a great thriller. Can you briefly outline the book's origins and what your intentions were when you started? And did those change as you went along? Um, so when I first got the idea for To the Sea, I was kind of thinking of the idea of uh, the ocean as your happy place, as, as it is mine. And I was also thinking about um, the idea of home and what it means to people. Um, and they sound like quite nice ideas, but uh, I write psychological thrillers, so I kind of had to turn those ideas on their head uh, and make it a little bit creepy. Uh, so that was definitely with me the whole way through writing the book those two kind of ideas or themes uh, I really wanted to to stick with. Um, and I think with Anna, who's the main character in To the Sea, 18-year-old Anna, um, it was always for her going to be about home, uh, her love for the ocean, um, and whether she was willing to give that up or not. Did you have any preconceived ideas about what you wanted readers to get from the book? Or were you happy for readers to bring and take what they wanted from the book? I don't think I did. Um, when I first start writing a book, I don't really think about the reader. Um, but I think as I get to the end, I start thinking more and more about them. So um, I quite like the idea of the reader uh, taking away whatever they want to from my book. Um, I kind of hand it to them. Um, and I quite, I quite like uh, hearing from people and, and what they take, take from my books. Can you tell us about the importance and reasons for setting the book in New Zealand? Uh, for me, I, I self-published three books before To the Sea, uh, and they were all set in New Zealand. And for me, um, writing what you know in this case, I'm not a big believer of uh, write what you know for everything else, but for setting, for me, I like to know what a place not only looks like, but um, the smells and the way it feels. Uh, and obviously I, I know New Zealand um, at this stage of my life. Uh, I wouldn't dream of setting a book anywhere else but New Zealand. I lived in England for three years, um, but I don't think that's long enough for me to uh, write a book uh, set in that country. So just for me, it's I know New Zealand intimately. Uh, and Into the Sea, it's set uh, at a Luca, which is a fictional pine plantation. Uh, overlooking the Pacific Ocean, but I obviously based it on a couple of places in New Zealand uh, on the Coromandel Coast. Uh, I used to have my summer holidays there as a child, and um, I based the, the the idea of the pine plantation. I based in Apotiri, uh and the big the big cliffs. I based on Shakespeare Cliff, um, which is around by Fitianga. So I had those two places uh, in my head when I developed Deluca. There's a lot of darkness in the book. For example, Hurley, the family's patriarch, is a gruesome, cold, chilling and frightening creation. And there's also violence, coercion and brainwashing, to name just a few of the darker elements. Can you tell us a little bit about how you went about approaching such dark characters and subjects? I smiled as Simon was reading out that question. I didn't really mean to, but um, it is a very dark book. And to be honest, I'm not sure if I intended it to be as dark um, as it was uh, when I started. Um, as I said, I write psychological thrillers and there's always murder and crime. Um, but this one was quite dark and um, it wasn't really my intention, but uh, to a certain extent, the setting and the characters did take over um, and in a way demanded their story to be told, I think. And Hurley is by far the most disturbing character uh, I've ever uh, developed or, or made up. Um, but I think, I think it works and I think, um, yeah, just with the whole psychological thriller element, I think that on, ominous kind of creepy feeling all through, uh, to the sea, yeah, it, it's just, just the way I aimed it to be. The book does some very difficult to achieve things in literature, such as exploring seemingly inexplicable behaviours and revealing potential motives behind them. Everything in the novel is nuanced. Is this complexity and the lack of black and white and motives that change as the story progresses something you as a writer aspire to in all your works, or is this just your approach for this novel? 
Uh, I think for me, a hundred percent is I love the the greyness uh, uh, instead of the black and white. So um, I guess I guess Hurley, out of all the characters, he's pretty black and white. Um, but with all the others, there there is a greyness. Um, they all do good and bad things. Um, and, and with all my books, I like exploring that idea. Uh, that not everyone is purely good and not anyone is purely evil, even though you might argue uh, uh, Hurley is. Uh, but yeah, with all my books, I, I try to explore um, the grey the gray area of life. The book is complex with several unreliable narrators and examines intergenerational relationships. Can you talk about unreliable narrators and their importance to the plot? I didn't really, um, I don't think I really set out to uh, have unreliable narrators into the sea. Um, I love unreliable narrators, but um, I think, especially with Anna and Anahita, the two main characters, I think they appear unreliable because they change so much in the progression of the book. So we start off with Anahita, who's Anna's mother, uh, in the past. So we meet her when she's 12 years old. And then we follow her all through her life until she's about 40. Um, and she changes hugely. Um, and I th and that's the same with Anna. We're, we're with her for quite a short time, but she goes through so much in that short time that her character changes hugely. Um, the lesser characters, um, especially Dylan and Marina and, and their kind of subplot story, um, I guess that could be looked at as a little bit unreliable. But I think in a book like this with secrets and lies, um, the reader isn't sure who to trust, um, so I guess that make, makes them unreliable, but I'd like to think um, I'm not cheating anyone and I'm not tricking anyone, and I'd like to think their unreliability comes from um, more of a, ch a progression in their characters um, and the way their personalities change throughout the book. As well as the sea itself, you treat the location of To the Sea like a character, and like the other characters in the novel, it shifts and changes, presenting different faces. Indeed, there's a passage about the constant erosion eating away at the cliff edge. Can you expand on your thoughts around this? Uh, so, Into the Sea, the setting is is a huge part of the book. Uh, and I guess Aluka, which is the pine plantation where To the Sea is set, uh, it's almost like a character in itself, which was very much done done on purpose. And I think I really wanted to mirror the environment so the the crumbling cliff face and uh the weather patterns the storms and, and the ocean and the dense pine forest i kind of wanted to mirror that um to the characters and especially hurley i think at the start i even have a, a passage about comparing him to the cliffs and the pahutakawa trees uh his his physical appearance um and with all my books setting setting is quite major so yeah to the Sea is told from two viewpoints, Anna in the present and her mother Anahita in the past. A multi-layered plot, coupled with the parallel time frames used constantly to unfold some facet of the story, is a difficult one to work with as a writer. Can you expand on the reasons you chose this particular structure? Um, structure is always a tricky one, and I think especially with mysteries and murder mysteries, um, you really have to think about the way you're going to tell the story and the way it unfolds. But I think early on it became quite clear to me that it was going to be a dual timeline. I first thought about Anna's character, she is the main character, so she was always going to be telling part of the story, but I soon realised with these past crimes I needed to go back into the past when Anna hadn't even been born yet, um, and Anahita, her mother, uh, was the, the obvious uh, choice to tell that story. Um, yeah, it was it's quite tricky writing a dual timeline, I think. It's just being able to slot in all the different things to have the reveal, uh, the reveals at the right time. Um, yeah, but I think it was the best way, it was the best way to tell the story. There are constant revelations and reveals to keep the reader glued to the pages of the book, and you add new aspects to the plot right up to the last page. One reviewer described these constantly shifting devices as akin to the ripples from a dropped stone. Can you tell us a little bit about how you went about such subtle plotting to achieve this effect? 
Yeah, I guess that's probably carrying on what I said before. Um, I, I plot quite a lot, well I did for this novel, um, and I think it was because of the dual timeline and how I had to insert different things happening over the time. You'll see um, when you, you read the book, um, the kind of timelines almost feed off each other. Uh, so revelations come at a very specific time and there was a lot of um, chopping and changing about when I was putting Anna's passages in and, and Anahita's passages in. Um, uh, so with reveals also, um, Marina and Dylan's subplot uh, that only came kind of halfway through writing that that part wasn't actually actually planned um, and also I ended up writing three different endings for To The Sea. Um, I couldn't quite get it right and with the help of my agent Vicky um, we were going back and forth. There were, lo there were lots of different endings um, and I feel um, we I absolutely got the right one after it was third time lucky. Your writing has been compared to the great Daphne du Maurier, an author I love. How do you feel about that as a comparison? Um, a little bit ridiculous, but <laughs> Daphne du Maurier is, uh, is amazing. And I'd always heard of her, but up until a couple of years ago, I hadn't read any of her books. Um, but when To The Sea came out, um, HarperCollins compared me to her. And um, so I thought I'd better read one of her books. So I read Rebecca, which is maybe one of the most well-known ones, and I absolutely loved it. And um, I can I can probably see the comparison with, with our settings, that kind of gothic uh, setting, and especially with Rebecca, it's, it's close by the sea. So um, having not read Rebecca and having written To the Sea, um, it was quite interesting. I could see that, I could see the similarities. Um, and I could probably say now with my next book, In Her Blood, um, I would say Rebecca is definitely inspiration uh, for that, uh, the setting, that gothic setting as well. So yeah, it's an amazing, amazing compliment. As a library, we are always interested in the authors and novels that formed a writer. Who and what did you read when you were growing up and what effects did their works have on you? Uh, I read everything. I feel uh, in my teens I probably read more widely than I do now, but um, there's a few books that, that stick in my head. Um, the first would be the Anne of Green Gables series by um, Ellie Montgomery. Uh, I started reading those when I was probably eight or nine, um, and I can't say I probably understood them, but I read them over and over again all, all through my teens. And I absolutely love them, and I still remember how they made me feel when I read them. And I think looking back on it, I the reason I write is because I want to do with my books what Ellen Montgomery's books did for me and that they they transported me. I like the idea of someone sitting down with my book and um, I take them to another place or another time. Um, other books, uh, probably Patricia Cornwall, this is probably in my mid-teens I was reading Patricia Cornwall's books. So she, um, her main character is Dr. Kay Scarpetta who's a medical examiner. Um, and I loved her books. That was that was a bit of a jump from Anne of Green Gables to uh, uh, Patricia Cornwall, who writes about serial killers and crime. Uh, but those two that stand out. But I remember all through my teens, books like Little Woman and The Diary of Anne Frank, um, The Power of One by Bryce Courtney. Uh, there, there's just so many. To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, those are those are ones that stand out for me. Can I ask you another more general question? How do you arrive at the starting point for your novels? And if you can speak to your new book, In Her Blood, here as well. Um, I guess the starting point for all my books has been a little bit different, but I think I could probably say uh, character or setting probably sparks the first kind of flame of an idea. Uh, for To The Sea, uh, apart from those kind of main themes I mentioned at the start, I... Anna came to mind, 18-year-old Anna, and I had the idea uh, she was living with uh, her, her big extended family, uh, and then Hurley came to mind, an abusive grandfather, uh, and that's kind of that's kind of all I had. And then I just start building on it. Uh, for In Her Blood, uh, my my new book, I I had the idea of two sisters, um, and again. A dual timeline so I the dual timeline came came straight away there was no question that that that's the way it was going to be told 
So I have two, two sisters in the present and two different sisters uh, 20 years ago. Uh, and again, the setting for In Her Blood, uh, I wanted to set it at an, an older kind of house. Um, and I actually started Googling places in, in New Zealand just to get some kind of idea of, of where to set this. And almost straight away, the Waitomo Hotel came up. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the Waitomo Hotel is about 15 minutes um, south of Otrahonga, uh, kind of in, in, in the King Country in the North Island. Um, and it's where the Waitomo Caves are, a huge tourist attraction. So I'm from Otrahonga, and uh, when that popped up, I was like, oh, of course, the Waitomo Hotel. Um, and it's closed down now. But it's a, it's a beautiful old hotel, and that's, that's my inspiration for where I've set in her blood. When and how did you discover you had to be a writer? Was there a moment of epiphany? Um, a moment of epiphany? I, I don't think so, but I think if you asked me from about the age of seven, what I wanted to do when I grew up was would have been to be a writer. Um, I used to write lots of stories when I was little, um, normally around Anne of Green Gables. Um, so yeah, I used to write historical fiction, I guess. Um, in my teens, I, I wrote terrible poetry, um, and then I kind of gave it away in my late teens and twenties. Um, I went to university and traveled, but I always, I always had the idea that I'd like to be a writer, but actually never did anything about it during those years. I, um, I had my two girls, uh, so they're, mm, how are they, 12 and 14, uh, and uh, a few years back when they were younger, they were probably two and four at the time, uh, I just picked up my pen and started writing fairy stories for them. Uh, and it was lovely to be to be writing again. Uh, and I wrote them two or three, two or three little fairy stories and, and family and friends read them to, the, to their kids. But I realised while I loved uh, writing again, um, fairy stories weren't really what, what I wanted to do. So I had a go at uh, my first book and uh, so I got back into it and, and there were a few false starts but um, I think yeah it was always in me to be a writer I just needed to I needed to start. What do you think about To The Sea being the book selected as part of the Together We Read initiative where the whole nation is encouraged to read the book? Um, amazing, thrilled um, and it's uh, yeah, just for me as a as a writer, that's that's just a huge thing for, for my book to have been chosen uh, out of many amazing New Zealand books. Um, it's a special thrill for me, though, because I've worked in libraries uh, my whole life uh, after university and a bit of travel. I ended up uh, doing a diploma in library and information studies. Uh, so I've worked in I've worked mostly in specialist libraries like medical libraries. Uh, and I've worked in, in the UK and in university libraries. But um, more than that, for me, um, just all through my childhood, school libraries and public uh, libraries played a, a huge part in my life, um, and public libraries still do. So I, this is amazing. Final question. You have a new book, In Her Blood, coming out in November. Can you tell us a little bit about it? And was it a very different writing experience from To The Sea? Uh, so In Her Blood, as I've said, is set at a, a old hotel in a very small settlement in New Zealand. Uh, it tells the story of Jack and Charlie. So Jack has been away uh, for seven years and she's just found out that her sister Charlie is missing and no one seems to care. So she returns to this her little hometown of Everly uh, where she's not necessarily welcomed back uh, to look for her sister Charlie. And meanwhile, we have the dual timeline, as I mentioned, and we go back 20 years uh, to Everly and the Gilmore Hotel, and we have Paige uh, and Lisa's story um, and the lead up to when Paige Gilmore went missing. So most of the story is set in this little settlement, settlement of Everly, uh, and most of the action is set at the old Gilmore Hotel. Uh, and the dual timeline kind of um, comes together towards the end and we find out what happened with, with Charlie and Paige. Um, and also why it's different from To The Sea. Uh, the experience, I guess, it was quite different um, in the beginning in that I wrote To The Sea without any kind of, of book deal or anything like that, um, which was um, held no pressure at all. Uh, and the 
the experience was yeah, very stress-free. Um, so uh, when I got my book deal for To The Sea, it was a two book deal from HarperCollins, which was am amazing. Uh, and after I celebrated, I realized that I also have to write another book, uh, which was a bit nerve wracking. So I think I felt the pressure a little bit more when I was writing this book. Um, and maybe a little bit trying to force an idea because um, I didn't really have any ideas after I finished To The Sea. Um, but as a writer, I think you need to trust that, that the ideas soon come. And they did, which is great. Um, and In Her Blood had quite a heavy structural ed edit compared to To The Sea. So um, I have wonderful editors at, at HarperCollins. And um, between all of us, um, we've turned it into a fantastic book and, and I can't wait for everyone to read it. Um, so In Her Blood is out at the beginning, beginning of December this year. That was everything. Thank you very much for uh, tuning in, everyone. And I really hope you enjoy reading To The Sea.